Then I quickly went to mention this regarding Nini H launching her label, which is going to be called Ume with an EP from Bashka. So it's a non-for-profit outlet which will platform artists from unrepresented backgrounds. I think this is pretty cool considering what Nini H went through with the possession. She went through a bit of an issue with them in terms of her. I think they held some license or something to an old track or maybe her catalog or they hadn't paid her but it was really unpleasant to go through and to see it happen in real time because if i remember correctly a lot of nini h's early buzz from what i remember again from the outside looking in, i'm pretty sure she was doing her bits on the ground level wherever she's from i think she's from berlin if i'm not mistaken i'm sure she was doing her bits over there but from what i remember seeing from being just a general punter from around the way or from out of the way sorry i remember her kind of blowing up off the back of the possession parties in paris where they're doing these random kind of warehousey type events playing that kind of hard fast techno sort of stuff during the midst of the pandemic and of course i saw her playing on whore that online um you know live streaming platform in berlin that they have that's essentially the german version of boiler room or the berlin version of boiler room and i think those are the two places that i remember kind of seeing her face seeing how she played seeing her style and whatnot and of course recent interview um recently with playful magazine um which i sorry is it playful yes playful magazine which i definitely recommend you check out if you haven't already they've got a really good channel on youtube as well where they do interviews with djs and whatnot so it's quite cool to see her kind of you know be able to um come back from that heartbreak come back from that setback and sort of rewrite the wrongs and also kind of show and prove what she would like to see in terms of a label right in terms of going through a difficult situation with a record label you go for a different situation difficult situation with a booking manager a booking agent whatever it may be called instead of whining and complaining about it you go out there and you kind of try and reset those issues and try and provide something different so that the people coming you know after you not even beneath your generation but people coming after you have something else that they can kind of grab onto they don't have to go through the same pitfalls or have the same face some of the same hardships you have to they don't have to you know what i mean it continues here. Nini H is launching a label Ume with an EP from Munich-based artist Bashka. Out on February the 15th, Maktub spans five vocal-driven techno cuts and features a Nini H remix. The EP, the EP sorry, is an idiosyncratic um, love letter to myself, my heritage and my community. Bashka said, my songs reflect the expedition of the past year and half up until now and all the emotions i gave myself space and fortune to deal with and also to relish in that sounds very tasty a not-for-profit outlet ume will platform artists unrepresented backgrounds such as qt bipoc artists god damn and those from the swana region Swaana region. It will also share revenue with artists on the roster and promises an open critique of toxic industry standards, crude label politics, and the dominant music industry business model. So again, this is all woke. This is all a bit lefty, a little bit cringy, a little bit yuck, but they are putting their money where their mouth is, you know, kind of showing and proving. And that's a great thing about little niches, about underground scenes, about subcultures. You can try these little utopian, um, ideologically possessed projects and see if they work. Because really and truly, you're not really doing it for to blow for the main masses or the or the you know the normies out there. Obviously, that'd be um, you know amazing. But you're mostly doing it to kind of feed your base and to kind of speak to the choir. So why not actually put out some good messaging out there and hope that maybe some of the residual effects on this will be some little kind of industry changes you never know and who knows if you're lucky it may also kind of seep into the mainstream um, consciousness you know nothing's off the table but i do like this approach i'm not going to lie even though you know it's a bit like you know trigger happy with the terms and stuff but we continue last may nini h called out prison label position for withholding payment for a 2021 ep as i mentioned called beast describing experience as extremely disheartening via instagram petition responded with an online apology conceding that it's important to not to exploit music producers we exploited her but it's not important not to exploit her um since then nini h has released an ep on live from earth club and contributed to a fast forward charity compilation which raised money for a community-based fund launched for the club um i think it's called like 41 something but it's got a sign um listen to bashka's d4 here i'm not going to play it because i'm probably going to get copyright strike but you can see the cover there it looks pretty sick for uh, five tracks track one act bad then you got default azaz consequence of calamities and you got default featuring the nini h remix there which is pretty nice 
this whole possession thing was actually funny also if you think about it like i think for the majority of the issues happening in dance music it is quite funny when you see all the issues especially when it considers especially when it kind of applies to people within the what you call it q t b i p o t community the lgbtq community the queer community it's quite interesting when you see the people that are usually scamming them the people that are usually scamming them people that are usually you know doing all these really crappy horrible things like essay and r word are usually people within their own community it's never the bros and the chads that they worry about when they turn away those guys at the door i'm sure you know they're not going to be good matches for the people over there right i'm imagining your typical michael bibby crowd probably won't mold too well or blend too well with the guys and the girls and the days and the dems who go to a nini h party but still i find it very very interesting how usually the people who are the quickest and the first to scam you are the ones that are nearest and dearest to you, which is always the case, right? It's always the case like that. It's always people that look like you're actually the ones you should be more worried about as opposed to the big, bad, you know, um, scary person out there who you're not really that sure about. But I'm glad to see her bounce back. I'm glad to see her kind of put her best foot forward and show and prove and actually set an example as to what she wants to see in a label the not-for-profit um, aspect of it is really interesting also to see how that works how do you manage and function and operate a record label maybe it's just like an outlet we just put stuff up on the soundcloud or maybe you have a deal with some production companies i don't really know how sure it works but regardless i'm curious to see how this does work in the real world out there and hopefully it pops off and becomes a model that people can follow going forward one can only hope